like me have been you know receiving blessing from the Lord in different forms, you know. On the other day our brother talked to us about the power in saying no when we should say no. Many people, if you are like me though, don't let me say many people, some of us must have learned from me that there is power in saying no when you should say no. And yesterday, our brother talked to us using the example of Ruth. powerful example. Up to today, the Jewish people always read out that passage in the book of Ruth every time anybody wants to convert into Judaism. And today, we are being taught how to be loyal. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to please, any time you hear any of our ministers leading us in any way, in any form, please pay attention because you don't know when the angel of your blessings will visit you. And I pray that none of us will miss out in the day of our blessings in Jesus' name. Today, I want to continue from last uh, time. You know, last time, I spoke to us on promises. I spoke to us on promises. Now, I told us that God's promises are there for us and that we are free to take them whenever we want to take them. I read to us from 2 Peter chapter 1 and in verse 3 and I explained to us that it's not that God is saying, maybe I will give you, or, uh, okay, I will think about it. No, it has already been given to us. Today, I want to continue. I want to tell you that God's promises is sure. So I titled it, God is faithful to his promises. God is faithful to his promises. Now, in the Bible, there are thousands, thousands of God's promises. You need to learn to receive them. And that is why we are doing this every time, so that we can learn to receive them. Not only that, and I want to advise you today, don't be reluctant to claim them because they are for you. Don't be reluctant to claim them. Don't doubt. Don't, no, no, after, after you have prayed, they will say, well, I hope so. No, there's nothing like that. If they are yours, and you have claimed them, then just be waiting for the performance. Why did I say that? Because God is a faithful God. God is a faithful God. And Bible promises, they are the sacred word of a faithful God who never breaks his promises. I will repeat that. Bible promises are the sacred word of a faithful God who never breaks his promises. His promises are absolute. They are absolute. 
And you know what? They are trustworthy. You can trust them. It has been consistently demonstrated over a long period of time and through our descriptions there is proof proof that God gives his promises and you know uh, the promises of God are the assurance that we have of his commitment to us and it is also his guarantee to do what he says he will do. Can I repeat that again? The promises of God, they are the assurance of his commitment to us and they are also his guarantee to do what he says he will do. All we need to do is to follow the example of those who through faith and patience inherit what God has promised them. That's what we do. You know in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, we read about about how our people through faith inherit what God has promised. And that is the same thing I want us to learn to do. I have to learn from these people. Follow their example. Those who through faith and patience inherit what God has promised. His promises are faithfully fulfilled in both Old Testament Israel and during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth and even today. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can depend on God's promises. It is dependable. Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. If you can open your Bible. And please, I have said it yesterday, I have said it again. When we come together, we come together to be blessed. We come together to be blessed. We don't come together to bother anybody or to say, you should leave this time and not do anything. It is for your own good. And I want us to see it like that. It is for our own good. Our coming together is for the good of everyone. So nobody is being forced. It's not that you just have to show your face or even show us your name so that we don't see that you are sleeping or you are playing. It is for the good of everyone. Everyone is expected to be, to join us both in spirit and in their soul. So that as, as God's word is flowing, as his blessing is flowing, it will not pass us. Numbers 23 and in verse 19. Please open your Bible. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Let me tell you, if you have been disappointed before, if you have been failed before, don't ever compare God's reliability with any human being. Don't compare it. Number one, God will never lie. God will never deceive. And God will never mislead you. He will not do that. If you, if, you, if, you are, if you are misled, it's you that is misleading yourself, not God. God will never mislead you. God will never lie to you. And God will never deceive you. And finally, God will not change his mind. He will not change his mind. You can trust God. You can trust God. You can rely on God. 
You can rely on him to keep his promises in every detail. He will keep his promises to the smallest detail. They are a pledge that he has made to us. He has made a pledge. And God will keep his pledge. So if God has made promises in his word, yeah, those promises, they are true. And God will not change his mind. Therefore, even today, even tonight, you can count on the promises of God. You can count on the promises of God. I want to read two or three scriptures, then we pray. Genesis 28 in verse 15. Genesis 28 in verse 15. The Bible says, Behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go. And we bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Can you see that? He said, I will keep you. I will keep you wherever you go. Because God knows that some people will wander away. Our brother said it yesterday. The children of Israel. The children of Jacob. Instead of them to stay where God says, stay there, and I will bless you. Because they were impatient, they went to Egypt. And in going to Egypt, they ended up becoming slaves in Egypt until God now sent a deliverer to deliver them after 430 years. And the sea came back to that land where God said you should stay. So you see, wherever you go, this is a promise of God. He said, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And then I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. God knows that they will wander away, but he said, I will bring you back to this land where I have promised you to stay. Now, when they came to that land, what happened? Joshua in chapter 21. Let's read verses 43 to 45. Joshua 21. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn. Now, now, stop there. Go to verse 44. The Lord gave them rest on every side just as he had sworn. Verse 45. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Can you see the faithfulness of God? Joshua was reminding them. Now, chapter 23 of Joshua. Look at verse 14. He says, Not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. What are the promises? One, he promised them the land. Then he promised them rest. He promised them the land. And he promised them rest. Every promise of God to Israel was fulfilled. You see, the Bible is a historical record of the absolute reliability of God's promises. It, it, it is, is a proven and trustworthy God. So you can count on Him. God keeps His promises. He keeps His promises. And He will keep His promise to you tonight. He will keep his promise to you tonight. Time, because of time, I want to show you some examples, but because of time, I will just paraphrase it. You see, over thousands of years ago, God's promises have been thoroughly tested, and they are found to be true. Now, for example, for example, quickly. Healing. 
let's take healing for example and let us go back 4,000 years only 4,000 years because of time let's take healing for example from the time of Abraham which, which was let's say about 4,000 years ago Abraham God's promises in the Bible have been thoroughly tested and they have been found to be trustworthy. Now, Jehovah Rapha healed Sarah, Abraham's wife, of barrenness. He healed her of barrenness. That was about 4,000 years ago. Genesis in chapter 18 and in verse 13 and 14, you will see there, where the Lord said to Abraham, and when Sarah was laughing, Abraham, God said, Shall I? Can I lie? Look at verse 14 of that passage. He says, eh, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have his son. Did it happen? Of course, it happened. Now, 500 years later, 500 years later, in the wilderness, snake was troubling the children of Israel. Now, Numbers in chapter 21, let's read quickly. Numbers in chapter 21, and verses 8 and 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fairy serpent, set it, on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, he shall live. Verse 9. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If the serpent had beaten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Who is that bronze serpent? is just a foreshadow of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just a foreshadow of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah? And now, 1,500 years later, I'm jumping now because of time. I told you 4,000 years ago, 500 years after that, which was 3,500 years, now, 1,500 years later, what happened in the Gospels, in the Acts of Apostles? God was still healing. He was still doing the work of healing. He will heal you tonight. Any area where you need the healing, He will heal you tonight. He was still doing the work of healing because he never changes. He's still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. When you look at Luke in chapter 6 and in verse 6, the Bible says, Now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught, and a man was there whose right hand was with that. And when you look at chapter 9 and in verse 6 of that same Luke gospel, he says, so they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Healing everywhere. And when you now come to the Acts of Apostles, Acts in chapter 3 and in verse 1, Peter and John, they healed the lame man in front of the gate called Beautiful on the Sabbath day. This all happened in the past 1,500 years after the war that happened in the wilderness. So now, 2,000 years later, that is 2,000 years from the wilderness, what are we saying? We are talking about today now. We are talking about today. Is God still do the same today? Of course he is. He is. Now in Psalm 145, 
and in verse 13, the Bible says the Lord is faithful to love to all his promises and loving to all that he has made. God is faithful. You can rely on God. You can rely on God. In 1 Thessalonians 5.24, the Bible says, Faithfully see that calleth you, who also will do. There are no broken promises with God. If he has spoken, he will do. He will do. If he has spoken, he will do. Tonight, I want you to know that Abraham was 100 years. Sarah was 90 years when Isaac was born. There is nothing impossible for God. There is nothing impossible for God. And God is here tonight. All these promises, all those promises, they are yes in our Lord Jesus Christ. You can depend on God's promise. Because Jesus is there to guarantee you. I said, all those promises, they are yes in Christ for us today. So you can depend on those promises because Jesus Christ is there to guarantee them. God says, I promise. Jesus says, yes. God says, I promise. Jesus says, what? Yes. So, Jesus Christ is the assurance. is the surety of God's promises for you and for me. You can count on God's promises. Let us pray. Jesus Christ is saying yes and amen to you right now. He's saying it on your behalf right now. Always remember that as we pray now. Jesus is our assurance that the promises of God will be fulfilled. He's our assurance. The promises of God will be fulfilled. In Exodus 23, as I pray for you now, the Bible says from verse 25, you must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, he says, I will bless you with food and water and I will protect you from illness. He says there will be no miscarriages or infirmity in your land. And I will give you long life, full life, by the reason of that word of God. By the reason of the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary. I bless you today. And I say it into your life. Good health. Good health is your portion. If you have been battling with any sickness, be fully restored now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your full restoration now in the mighty name of Jesus. I said through the revelation of the word of God, health and vitality will be somebody's testimony right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I said through the revelation of the word of God, if you cling to it now, health and vitality will be somebody's testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, you will not need any form of medication to stay healthy in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not need any form of medication to stay strong. In the mighty name of Jesus, every medical verdict against you, no matter how correct they think they are, I am releasing the truth of the word of God to you right now. That every medical verdict against you, is now changing to testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. They are changing to testimony for you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever disease, whatever sickness is afflicting your life, 
they cease to be up in your body now in the mighty name of Jesus. They cease to be in your body now in the mighty name of Jesus. They cease to be in your household, in your family right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every generational cause of hell, every enchantment of the wicked ones that have been hanging upon on your on you, on your children tonight by the reason of this revelation of God, they are dropping off now. I said they are dropping off now. They are being shaken out of your body now. In the mighty name of Jesus, they are dropping off the body of your children now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of infirmity that is tormenting your life, I cause them now to their root. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will win and they will die. They will never trouble you again. In the mighty name of Jesus. From now on, you are free. You are free from any form of sickness and any form of disease. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever does not glorify God in your body, I said today, anything at all that will not be a glory to God in your body, right from the crown of your head to the very sole of your feet, anything that will not glorify God, I command them to get out of your body now in the name of Jesus, because you are already blessed with good health. Every age long ordeal that you have been battling with, that you are already resigning yourself to, because they told you that that's the same thing that afflicted your mother, and it afflicted your grandmother. I said every age long ordeal in your life, they are coming to an end now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Everything that is planted in your body by the devil when you are sleeping, I command them every sickness, every sickness, every sickness, every disease, every pain, every discomfort, every affliction that is planted in your body when you are sleeping, unknowingly, when you are sleeping, I say today, I command them to get out of your body now. I command their roots to be withered completely. You are free now. You are free now. We are free now. God has given somebody the power now to overcome every dream attack. Anyone that is planning to attack you when you are sleeping, God has given you the power today. You will see. They will want to come as they used to come before. And you will see how they will be falling, even in your dream. Even in your dream. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will live from today a life that is victorious, that is overcoming, that no one will be able to defeat you again. And you will give your thanksgiving and your testimony in the committee of the people of God. Every affliction is over you. Every sickness is over in the mighty name of Jesus. Every disease is dead now. You will push them out. You will flush them out by any form, by any way, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Because of all this, your children that you have blessed. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.